Jacksonville against the Florida Gators. How will they respond today as they meet this group, the Kentucky Wildcats, coming off a one-point win against Mississippi State last weekend. They are bowl eligible once again. It'll be an SEC East Hill, our all-tell game of the week, featuring the Georgia Bulldogs and the Kentucky Wildcats. The Dogs at 7-2, and two, the Wildcats at 6-3. and three. And a pleasant good Saturday afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Neal, and welcome to Commonwealth Stadium on a beautiful day for some SEC football. And as we hit November 8th, remember, in just under a month, we'll all reconvene in Atlanta for the SEC title game on December 6th at the Georgia Dome. And I tell you what, today could be a monumental day because it could be the earliest that we have known those two uh, uh, teams that will play for the title. If Florida wins, they're in. If Alabama wins, they're in. But Mark Richt and his club, they're still alive. They need a lot of things to happen but they're trying to rebound from what occurred in Jacksonville, and we've had a chance to talk to him, and boy, he is locked in. Joining us, a guy that's always locked in, my partner Dave Archer, or at least we think he's locked in. Dave, you've been in this situation as a player where you've lost a tough game against a team you really thought you had a chance to beat. Where does Georgia go from here? Well, after the hurting stopped, and believe me, that lasted into the early part of this week, Mark Rick realized, I've got to lock my team back in. We're playing a good Kentucky football team this week, and it, wasn't, it didn't take till about midweek where he started seeing signs of it. He actually thanked his football team for the way they responded this week. And then Rennie Curran stepped up, the sophomore linebacker who leads his team in tackles, had 13 tackles in this Kentucky game last year, said, hey, we've got everything left to play for. We can go 11-2 and like we did last year. And, hey, let's keep ourselves focused on this week. Well, as far as this Kentucky team goes, they have been living on the edge all season long. Last week, another indication of that. They had to block an extra point against Mississippi State to pick up that win. But they also started a true freshman quarterback, Randall Cobb. Now, you may know the name because he's played everywhere, but now he's their quarterback. Tell me about this guy. Well, one of the most dynamic athletes in the SEC is Randall Cobb. Now, Cobb will start at quarterback today, as he did last week, but we're going to see Randall Cobb everywhere. This kid has caught two touchdown passes. He's run for three touchdown passes, or run for three touchdowns, and he's thrown two touchdown passes. I'm so confused where he's lining up. They're hoping that George is confused because, believe me, there's only one Randall Cobb. Rich Brooks knows that. Yeah. Uh, he's got to find a way to get him the football. Well, they're actually going to take Cobb off of punt returns to let him catch his breath today, but I think there's a chance he may end up doing that as well. Let's take a look at our keys to the game. Well, the keys to the game for Georgia is they've got to lock in. The word that we heard all week long was execution. They feel like they can get back to executing like Georgia does. They have a chance to win each and every football game. And for Kentucky, they've got to play special. And not just on special teams, they've got to raise their level on offense to match a level on defense that's been outstanding all year long. SEC football is presented in high definition where available by Raycom Sports. The Georgia Bulldogs, the Kentucky Wildcats. Two years ago, Georgia comes into Lexington and they were shocked by this Kentucky team last year. Kentucky played Georgia pretty close at a 10 to nothing lead in the first half before Georgia rallied for the win. Kentucky wins the toss, they defer, so Georgia will get the football first. Tim Mastay will kick it off for the Wildcats. Richard Samuel, the talented true freshman back to return this kick, had a 60 yarder last week against the Gators. And has some running room here out over the 35 to the 36 yard line and that's where the dogs will start with their first possession. Well one of the tasks today for Kentucky slow down no Sean Marino let's uh, go down to Dave Baker and see what he has on that subject buzz. No easy task Dave uh, defensive coordinator Steve Brown told us yesterday he runs like a kick returner what do you have to do and what did Steve Brown tell his team you got to load the box you got to put eight guys up there then what you got to do is stay square and because of his great cutback ability you've got to stay patient on the backside you've got to attack but not over pursue. Well, and that puts a ton of pressure, Dave, on these two corners against Massaqua and A.J. Green. Out of the eye formation, first handoff goes to Marino. He's got plenty of room. He's to midfield and hit and dropped at the 44 by David Jones. A gain of 22 right out of the gates. Just heard Buzz talking about staying in your lanes. Be patient on the backside. Marino loves the cutback. Excellent job of seeing the crease to the backside. And all Georgia does is stay on their blocks and let Marino run to late daylight. He slides all the way to the backside off Clint Bowling's block. So a good start for the dogs. Georgia will open with a four receiver set on this first down. Quick throw out to Massaquah. 
Muhammad down to the 35 yard line. Brought down by Robbie McAtee. Take a look at our Budweiser starting lineups beginning with the George Bulldogs. Well, everybody knows about Noshawn Marino, and that's the focal point. He had a great day against Kentucky last year. That's where Kentucky wants to start. Had a tough time on the opening play to get Marino on the ground. And up front, a lot of moving around. Chris Davis is the backup on almost every one of those positions, not to mention he started in three of those positions this year. Here's Matthew Stafford on a second down and one. That handoff will pick up the first down. Marino inside the 30-yard line down to the 29. Our Budweiser defensive lineup for Kentucky. Well, this is a stout defensive front. They're anchored up front. Byron Pryor, a little banged up, going to start at D-tackle today. Their linebackers, excellent linebackers, slow to the football. It's a defense that allows just 3.6 yards of carry. And their secondary, this is a tough part, Lindley and Jones are going to be matched up one-on-one -on -one against A.J. Green and Muhammad Massaqua today. Smith getting his first start at safety today. Stafford throws, looking to the end zone. Massaqua, touchdown, Georgia. That didn't take long. And Massaqua gets past Smith for the touchdown. They get a blown assignment on the outside. Obviously, you get a receiver that wide open, but the corner bluffs to the weak side, and really Matthew didn't see it. Matthew Stafford didn't see it initially, and then finds Massaqua for the touchdown over Smith. But Smith is the safety seam looking back saying, hey, what are we doing? They bluffed the corner blitz to that side. Blair Walsh with the point after. It's up and it's good. Well, that didn't take very long at all for Georgia to shake off the cobwebs from last week. Stafford with yet another touchdown pass. Back in a moment. We got to the uh, stadium today about three hours early before kickoff, and these fans were out full force playing. As a matter of fact, this is the game. Everybody had their little beanbag toss game going. Yeah, what Dave's not telling is he lost three games before we came in. <laughs> tell you, Matthew Stafford won his toss there with Muhammad Massaqua on that uh, touchdown strike. How about that drive? Four plays, a resounding drive for the Dogs. Walsh will kick it off. That will go to Tony Dixon, just outside of the five-yard line. And Dixon will take it out over the 25 to the 27. And a Texas Pete scoring drive, 65 yards, a 29-yard touchdown reception. Of course, it all got started with a 22-yard run by Noshawn Marino to get the drive going in Georgia into Kentucky territory. And here comes Randall Cobb making his second start. The true freshman last week against Mississippi State, 56 yards through the air, 7 of 13. Had some rushing yards, had some receiving yards, and his first handoff goes to Alfonso Smith, and he will pick up eight, maybe seven on that play. Take a look at our Budweiser starting lineups for the Wildcats today. Tony Dixon, you see carrying the football there. They got something going in the run game last week. He had 66 on the yards on the ground, something they had a tough time generating, but their offensive line, it's a big offensive line. Gary Williams anchors that 32 starts at the left tackle spot. And no Jess Beats today. He's out for the rest of the season. Another tough loss for this Wildcat offensive line. Here's a little option to the right side. It'll go to Alfonso Smith. He'll be close to the first down, which sits if the ball knows the ball hits the 38. That should be good enough for the first down. There is Willie Martinez, his fourth year as the Georgia defensive coordinator, eighth year on the Georgia staff. Cobb trying to shake free, can't do it. He's dropped back at the 30-yard line. On a third down and one, they lose six. Andrew Gulley, the walk-on senior, getting his first career start along with Akeem Dent with the sack. Well, you mentioned third and one here, David. They had just picked up nine yards of the running game, decided to throw it on third down and one with an athletic quarterback like Randall Cobb. They have had a tough time converting on third down, just 29% on the season. So here comes Maste. First in the SEC, fifth in the country in punting. And hits a rocket. That will back up Prince Miller all the way inside the 15. Prince dancing around to the 25. A 54-yard kick. Give him tit on the return.
Massaqua knocked away by David Jones. But that first drive was uh, pretty impressive, Mr. Archer. Well, it was impressive, and we're going to show you three of the four plays. The first one is Marino setting the tempo, gets behind Clint Boiling, hits it up the field, puts him in Kentucky territory. The quick throw in the flat now to Massaqua. Another positive play, and then after the blitz, he finds Massaqua again in the end zone for a touchdown. So we just showed you three of the four plays on that drive. Georgia comes out executing on offense. The one play we missed was Sean Marino picking up a first down. Here is Marino. He's out over the 30, driving his way to the 33-yard line. Ashton Cobb, the junior safety, making the tackle for Kentucky. Now, this Kentucky club, folks, Kentucky fans, I'm going to tell you a number that's kind of scary. You guys have been outscored in the first quarter this year, 70 to 24. Uh, 77 to 24 with this touchdown today, but hang in there because in the fourth quarter the Wildcats have been awesome They've outscored the opponent 74 to 31 So hang in there well, You got to slow this Georgia team down now <laughs> for the next three quarters Stafford has all day now he runs fires Marino caught turns up field midfield plenty of running room down to the 33 yard line of Kentucky. A gain of 34 yards. It looked like a sandlot play when it was all said and done. Boy, that's a great call, Dave, because you could see Matthew Stafford when he gets out of the pocket to his right. He's going to wave at Marino. Come back to me a little bit. He does. He can presents his numbers to his quarterback. Good throw. And then Marino just does what he does. Gets out in the open field and gets as much out of the play as he can. But well, that's a good call. It, it did look like you were in the backyard someplace on that one. Not necessarily my backyard, but somebody's backyard. <laughs> Richard Samuel, the true freshman, with his first crack at it today. A little toss sweep to the right side. We'll get a couple. Samuel, according to the coaches, has been battling Caleb King this week for the number two spot behind Marino. And Richard Samuel had a good game against Florida, albeit it was late in the game. But uh, he really proved to the coaches this week and last week that he deserves some more uh, chances. Yeah, four yards, uh, four, four carries for 40 yards against Florida. But you see right there on that play, his ability to drop the shoulder, 225 pounds. He's the biggest of the backs coming out of the backfield. The freshman out of Cartersville, Georgia. He will stay in alongside Stafford. Quick throw, slant over the middle. It's caught by Massaqua inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line, and that's where they will blow the whistle. And it's another Bulldog first down. Ashton Cobb, the first man on the spot. But Georgia moving the football like a warm knife through warm butter. That's a good job of Stafford seeing the slant to Massaquah. That time Lindley just turned and allowed him to come to the inside, certainly expecting some linebacker help for the inside. He didn't get it. Well thrown ball. That's one that Georgia does an outstanding job on it. That slant route. Both AJ Green and Massaquah, tremendous field, getting inside, finding the windows. The chains are on the ground, so it is a first and goal situation for the dogs from the 10. Out of the eye formation. It'll go to the tailback Marino. He scoots it down to about the six and a half. Micah Johnson picks up the tackle for the Wildcats. Take a look at our red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. You look at Georgia in the red zone against Florida last week, only one touchdown. It's been a hot topic with the Bulldogs this week. It has been, and they talked about this is a restricted part of the field. They have to execute at a higher level. They have not done that. Staff, you missed, missed, missed uh, Chandler with a touchdown pass early in that Florida game last week, and then they had a field goal hit an upright. At Sutherland in motion, the fullback. They'll hand it off to Marino inside the five. Driving touchdown, Georgia. Okay. Okay. Marino. 13 rushing touchdown, which leads the lead. Sorry, Dave, when you, you when you can run it right at him like that, you know, really no reason to have to execute out in the edge. This is the, the big fellas coming off the edge. Great job of pulling around the end. Cordy Glenn gets around, gets the block, and Marino follows him through the hole. Walsh's point after is up and good. Another good one by the Bulldogs. Their first drive went four plays. This one goes seven for 73. 
Noshawn Marina with a six yard touchdown run. How about Noshawn? Six touches today for 77 yards already. And that kickoff will sail out of bounds. So Kentucky will get good field position to start. But let's go back to that touchdown, Arch. Dave, how about this athlete? Justin Anderson right here, 350 pounds, going to come around and get the block on Braxton Kelly. Watch him lead Marino through the hole. 6'5", 340, and then Marino just wants to get in the end zone more than anybody wants to keep him out. Kentucky had the football, looked pretty good on their first couple of plays, then third and one, went backwards and had to punt. Here's Cobb. He will hand it off to Monsell Allen. The bowling ball, 5'7", 225 pounds, will get right back to the line of scrimmage. Rennie Curran in on the tackle for the dogs. They're going to have to make a point of getting Randall Cobb out on the edge or give him an opportunity to run from a spread set, try to loosen this Georgia defense up because Georgia now trying to gang up on the run. This is that pony backfield that that uh, Coach Joker Phillips talked about with the two backs and Cobb in the back running the triple option stuff. The southpaw looking to throw. We'll loop it up. Pass is caught into Georgia territory. And that'll be good enough for a first down. It's Kyrus Langster who actually played high school football with Cobb out of Alcoa, Tennessee. Well, this is something that Randall Cobb could do, Dave. He'll extend plays. See, nothing there initially. Now he's going to skate to the outside and buy a little time for his receivers to get open. And he gets the throw to Langster for the first down. So Langster with 10 catches for that man's offense. Joker Phillips. See what he dials up here. Inside handoff goes to Tony Dixon. Looked like a hole there, but quickly that gap was closed. Rennie Curran among the dogs on hand for the stop. Well, Rennie Curran is a guy that just is around the football. Every time you talk to Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, and you mention Rennie Curran's name, his eyes light up. He sits up in his seat. He wants to talk about the young man. Tremendous football player. Leads him in tackles, but he's just around the football all the time. Second down and nine. Here's the option near side. It goes to Smith. He'll be close to that first down marker, probably about a yard shy. Rennie Curran runs him out of bounds. So Kentucky moving the football. And they need some success, Arch. They, they cannot afford to keep their defense on the field today. Oh, you're exactly right. And they need some success on the ground. They had a little bit of it last week. And what Randall Cobb provides is that triple option part of it, where he could keep it, throw it, give it to somebody else. And that allows a little bit more punch in the running game. Now, last time in third and one, they tried to throw it. I'd like to think here, they're probably going to try to hit it up in there. Timeout taken by Kentucky. Didn't like what they saw. They want to make sure they keep the football on what's been a pretty good drive. So with that time, <laughs> 14 to nothing, Georgia out in front, 5.47 to go in the opening quarter. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. As you look at no Sean Marino, SEC's top rushing performances of 2008. Marino has a couple of those, but Glenn Coffey against Kentucky went for over 200. Also, Michael Smith close to 200 against this Wildcat team. On third and short, they go to Smith, and I don't know if they got it. He leapt forward and got in the middle of a bunch of white jerseys. Hard to see where the spot is. C.J. Bird will get credit for the tackle. Yes. C.J. Bird's going to come off the edge, number five. C.J. Bird knifes through and gets his hands around the, the legs of Alfonso Smith. Officials timeout. We'll bring the change in and see how close he is. Let's go downstairs, check in with Dave Baker. Buzz. Hey, guys, big point in the game right here because of what Willie Martinez said the other day. He talked about college football, and momentum is big in any football game, but especially in college football. Once you get that snowball rolling downhill, it's tough to get it rolling the other way, and that's why with Kentucky coming up short, I think they're going to try to go for it here. They got the wind at their back and try to get some momentum back. I would agree with you, Buzz, and this has got to be no more than Randall Cobb on a quarterback sneak right here. I think you put the ball in your best player's hands, that's Randall Cobb, and try to lean and find a crease in this Georgia defense to get you a first down. There's no way they can put, allow Georgia's offense on the field again right now. You saw that Kentucky four out of nine on fourth downs this season. 
And that's actually a much better percentage than they are on third down. Absolutely. On third down, they're last in the league under 30%. So we'll see what they dial up here on a fourth down and one. That handoff goes up the middle to John Connor, the fullback, and he will have the first down and then some. The former walk-off goes 230 pounds. Well, it's a good job getting John Connor off the football. And really, it was about Kentucky coming off the ball up front. Did a great job of coming off the ball, getting it blocked, and then Connor just slid to daylight. Well, Kentucky in their hurry up. They like to get to the line and sometimes look at the sideline, but this time they'll go ahead and call the play and they'll go back to Connor again. It's maybe a yard. Rennie Curran in on the tackle. Boy, back to Rennie Curran just for a moment because he's not physically imposing in terms of his height. He's just 5'11", and I think that's generous. When we met with him, he's about my height, around that 5'9". Although I like to go 5'10", personally, but <laughs> some will say 5'9". You came up to Rennie Curran's chest. <laughs> but Rennie, I think that's part of his deal, Dave, yeah. is he gets lost back there and you can't get him blocked. He's extremely quick. Boy, Kentucky on the go. Pass is caught on the outside there. Matty Yemi, and he will be close to the 25-yard line. They'll act, actually mark it inside the 25. Prince Miller in on the tackle. It's a good job by Randall Cobb getting the ball out on time. You see his receiver did not come out of the break yet. Addy Emmy catches the football, and then Prince Miller gets him on the ground, but the ball comes out quick. Excellent job by the young quarterback to get it out on time and not allow Miller to close to make the play. Well, this hurry up has been pretty effective for Kentucky today. They've had some success with it. They're a team that likes to line up at the line of scrimmage and then do a check with me, and they'll look to the sideline for a play. Well, and it's like you're saying, Dave, they're not trying to speed the tempo of the game up. They're trying to lock you in defensively. As you see, they've come up just a hair short on the first down uh, with the throw. But what they're doing is now they get the best play in, and they, they're not necessarily speeding the game up, but they're staying at the line of scrimmage and keeping Georgia from substituting freely. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Arch, keep your eye on the bottom of the screen. Number 22, Aaron Boyd, was a, a really highly recruited player out of high school out of Lexington, Henry Clay. He developed mono in preseason camp, hadn't played a lot. He's the younger brother of former UK quarterback Shane Boyd, and he's a guy that this coaching staff is awfully high on. He might get his first chance on this series. Well, he's a tough matchup, too, at 6'3", 215 pounds. Out of the eye, the handoff will go inside to Connor. Pounding his way for the first down to the Georgia 15-yard line. Uh, perhaps during that timeout, Rich Brooks might have challenged his guys about their physicality against this Georgia defense. No, you don't think Rich Brooks challenged him, do you? I mean, this guy's intense, boy. And what a good job there of finding. They found a little something with that little fullback dive. They've run it three times, and they've gotten two first downs out of it. You look at the last game for Kentucky inside the red zone, which is always powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. And a quick throw and batted down. Jarius Went, the defensive end, the senior out of Lincolnton, Georgia. I'll get credit, credit for that pass broken up. That was a big play. A lot of times these plays don't, don't go in the playbook as a big deal, but Win gets the pause in the air. Two receivers were open for Cobb there. So a nice play by Wynn to minimize the damage there. Two receivers, one was Grinner, the tight end. He was open for a touchdown. Here's a little option near side. Some room for Alfonso Smith inside the 10, down to the nine-yard line, tripped up by Prince Miller. Well, this little triple option is looking pretty pretty uh, nifty, if you will. You got to execute, and a great job that time. John Connors run the football a couple times. Got a great block out in front that time for Alfonso Smith on the option. And you're right, Dave, this, this is just the wrinkle that Rich Brooks was looking for in his offense that creates some problems. Maybe they've been watching some Paul Johnson stuff over at Georgia Tech. Dixon and Smith in alongside Cobb on a third down and three. They'll go inside, get it close to the five with Alfonso Smith or the Irvin, the defensive tackle in on the play for the Dogs. And now you're looking at a fourth down and short. And Dave, this is where we talked to Joker Phillips yesterday. He says when you got a young football team, You've got to try to get points. When you put together a nice long drive, you want to reward them with points. They're going to roll the dice right here and try to get a first down so they can push it in for a touchdown. They got the big boys in on a 
jumbo set. They bring in Maurice Grinner and John Connor. They will go to Connor. Connor's inside the five. First down. Thirteen plays on this drive to this point, Arch. It started back at the Wildcat 40. But well, once again, is John Connor coming off and just getting in behind the left guard, Zip Duncan, straight up the field. And Connor now has picked up three first downs in this drive on the dive play. The Wildcats have executed two fourth down conversions on this drive. They'll be in the eye. They'll go to Connor. Nothing happening there. Probably lost a half a yard. Corby Irvin slices in there to trip up Connor. Corby Irvin, a nice job of knifing through and making the play. His seventh tackle for loss on the year. This Georgia team specializes in getting into your backfield, as does the defensive group for Kentucky. These two defensive lines really do a good job of getting in your backfield and messing up blocking assignments. Second down and goal from the three. Tony Dixon, the tailback, and a four receiver set. It's Dixon, touchdown Kentucky from three yards out. His fifth rushing TD of the year. And boy, did Kentucky need that. David, I don't think you could say enough about Kentucky's front line. Excellent job up front. They get in behind Leninsky, gets a good block, gets up to the next level, gets a linebacker block as well. Blocked two players on that play. And that was Jake Leninsky. Great job of getting the block there and allowing the back to get in the end zone. Well, that drive was big for John Connor, the fullback. He was involved in a lot of those dive plays. Didn't pick up a lot of yards, but they were crucial yards. Flags are down as the point after is up and good from Lona Sieber. But we'll see if we'll have to do it again. Boy, that has, uh, regardless of what happens here with this flag, and we'll wait for the call. Part of the snap. Offside, number 90 of the defense. Half the distance will go. Replay the drive. Ken Williamson, our referee, will try it again. But when you take the football and you move it 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14 plays, well, that's got to be something, uh, a mindset that this team really needed. Well, it was a shot in the arm for the entire football team, not to mention Steve Brown's defense, who had just been run through the first two series of the game. So that allows them to get their mindset back, and they say, hey, wait a minute, it's time to go play football now. We, we've gotten back into football game. The yardage when the penalty is declined. The click will occur at the three-yard line. Let's just kick the thing. The first one, the first one went through. So let's just <laughs> I'm a simple man. So we'll try it again. Nasty. And another flag. See, if we'd have just taken the initial one, we wouldn't have this problem. If nothing else, Sieber's getting some work and he needed it. Part of the snap. Offside. Number 90 of the defense. The penalty is declined. The try will occur at the three yard line. Well, I will say this, and, and I, I joke about the point after, but obviously it was the reason Kentucky won a ball game last year. It's a reason Ole Miss beat Florida. I mean, there's a. So obviously these are important. But the first one went through. Let's go back to this. He's hit it twice. How <laughs> so many times has he got to prove it? Here's the prove shot right here. 14th ranked Georgia leading the Wildcats 14 to 7. Boy, look at that drive. 15 plays, six, nearly six and a half off the clock. You hold the football that long, you're doing some things up front physically that's dominating, and that's exactly what Kentucky's offensive line did is they took over the line of scrimmage on the conversions with John Connor and then the touchdown. Excellent job up front. Last day's kick to the corner. Samuel will let it go out of bounds, and that's two in a row. The dogs did it, and Kentucky responds, so Georgia will get it at the 40. Kick out of bounds the kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First and 10. So Stafford will line up in the shotgun. Georgia's first two drives have resulted in touchdowns. Here's Marino. Stiff arming. A couple of blue jerseys. And look at that. He turns. You know, Rich Brooks said this this week. 
He says no Sean Marino has had some of the best three four and five yard runs of anybody in the country this year. The guy's unbelievable is his legs never stop churning. He's got nowhere to go here. Well oh, this is the run we saw to start the game off with. It was a great job and here he is out catching the football but the amazing thing is when nothing's there what he presents at the end of that run he stopped but he finds a way to get it done and that's exactly what he did on that last run. Second down and five. Under 30 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Stafford running a little bit of an option. He'll get close to the first down at midfield. Micah Johnson able to bring him down. Is that a design play? Very similar run he scored on last year against Kentucky from about the 20 yard line, ran for touchdown. It's a read play where he pulls it. You see a lot of players use it. They don't necessarily normally use it with Stafford. I asked Steve Brown about that. I said, you know, they run that read play. And Steve Brown, the defensive coordinator for Kentucky, says, yeah, but we're not as concerned about seven running as we are number 24. <laughs> right. So that time Stafford got some nice yardage for him. Well, that will do it as the clock ticks down to zeros in the opening quarter and a lot of offense between these two clubs. The Dogs at 7 and 2 coming in, Kentucky at 6 and 3. George's first two drives resulted in touchdowns and cut Kentucky responded with one of their own. Second quarter of football on the way from Lexington. It's our all tilt game of the week. We are back, and while we were away, a quick snap allowed Georgia to throw an incomplete pass. So now the dogs looking at a second down and 10. Kentucky showing pressure, man coverage on the outside with the two corners. Stafford will throw it again, looking to the outside. A.J. Green, David Jones on that coverage for Kentucky. Take a look at our first quarter statistics. As you can see, rushing yards ended up being somewhat equal. The Dogs, though, with 148 yards. Well, that drive they, just before the end of the first quarter for Kentucky was huge for the mindset just as the fans and Let's for this Kentucky this team. So a third down and 10 for the Dogs, the Kentucky faithful making some noise. Four man rush Stafford lofts it up going deep looking for A.J. Bryant incomplete David Jones locked up with Bryant in the middle of the field pressure came from Jeremy Jarman and it's punting situation for the dog. Let's go down to Dave Baker. You know you know Dave we've seen some funny things today kickoffs go out of bounds balls like that. It's a really windy day here. I don't know how well you can see it at home but at least a 10 to 20 mile win at least a two club win. Arch it's like a who's who of quarterbacks here today. I've seen Eric Zier, Buck Blue, you're in the house. I mean how much does wind affect throwing the football on a day like this. Well you're going to have to spin it extremely well. It's more effective on this situation where you're punting and it really affects the guy trying to catch it. Mims will punt it away. A wobbly kick. Fair catch called for at the 15 yard line. With well, that last drive by Kentucky. 15 plays and it was a lot of short yardage situations but they just uh, they won the battles at the line of scrimmage. They really did Dave. It was a physical uh, effort up front. They got the run game cranked up a little bit and Randall Cobb just just enough, did just enough for the passing game to offset what they were doing to the running game. Nice drive. Maybe one of their best of the year. That last drive 12 rushes just three passes. Here's Alfonso Smith making a man miss and he will take it out over the 25. That should be good enough for a first down. To be successful with this dive play, you've got to get the second level block. Those are the linebackers. Gamble gets blocked right there. Excellent job of getting up the field and getting the block. Gary Williams provides the crease for William, for Alfonso Smith. Williams, the 300 pounder out of Louisville, Kentucky, a senior. Cobb looking to throw now will tuck it. Cobb spins out and loses the football. Who's got it? It'll be Georgia football. And the dogs who coughed it up in critical times a week ago get the first turnover today. The forced fumble came from Roderick Battle. 
Yeah, Battle comes in from the backside, rakes it out. See, he was initially blocked, stayed in the play, did not give up on the play, came in from the backside and got the strip and Bird in with the recovery. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Dave happened right in front of us. Probably something Randall Cobb's done a thousand times in high school. He was spinning for that extra yardage, but at this level, you better know when you're spin, you might be hitting a brick wall, and he ran into a couple right there. Never saw the strip coming. Well, and that sets up Georgia with excellent field position just out there. Outside the Kentucky 35. Stafford will throw. Going for it all. Looking for Bryant. Just off his outstretched hands, and it'll be second down and 10. Trevard Lindley matched up with A.J. Green. Boy, what a matchup that is, too. One of the best corners maybe in the country, and Trevard Lindley against the outstanding freshman A.J. Green. Green at six foot four. Lindley a six one corner. That's a big time matchup right there. That time Lindley did a nice job of staying in his hip pocket, and making the throw too long. Well, Stafford was three out of four to start the game. He's now missed on his last four attempts. Georgia tried to hit some home runs in the passing game today. They'll toss it to Marino, and he'll be bottled up for a gain of a couple. Micah Johnson in on the stop for the Cats. This is a Kentucky defense that got shellacked by Florida, gave up 63 points. But other than that, no other opponent has scored more than 24 points against this group. Yeah, and they have not given up over 50% on third down other than the Florida game. They're outstanding. Third in the SEC in the conversion situation, 31% against this defense. And a former NFL defensive back, Steve Brown, calling the shots for this Kentucky defense. Third and eight. Play clock down to two. They get the snap off. It'll be Marino. Not going to happen. Inside the 35. But now you're kind of in that no man's land. Now Blair Wall certainly with plenty of leg. The young man has hit a 52 yarder. But is it a go for it situation? Well, it certainly looks as though they're going to do that, David. It's hard to tell. And Buzz, you look down on the set. Which way is the wind blowing? That may be affecting the decision here. Uh, hey. They would have the wind. They would have the wind, Arch. It's, it's kind of tough to tell. But if you look over my shoulder on the far side, Doug Pelfrey used to tell me when he kicked here that the Vanderbilt flag would give him the truest uh, turn on where this swirling wind was going. They would have it at their back, though, Dave. Well, the dogs are going to go for it here on fourth down and six, or it appears that way. Stafford rolling right back across the middle incomplete and the Wildcats hold again after the turnover and that's a quality stand a quick quick change situation and the Cats stand tall. Well you said it that's a great job by Steve Brown's defense to rise up and get a stop and really a good job defending this particular play. They tried to run a pick play they were trying to pick off Robbie McAtee and get the ball to Durham in the flat. But he had he, they took that away so Stafford had to rotate back to the inside and get it to green on an awkward cross the body throw and they couldn't get it done. Nice job by the defense of Kentucky. The Randall Cobb back on the field first and ten. He will keep it a couple of good blocks allow him to get a few yards. Georgia pursued the ball pretty well Prince Miller. Runs him out of bounds. Little run pass option for Randall Cobb. Get him out of the edge. Got a real good block from Zip Duncan, his guard, who pulled out in front of him. And those are the kind of things they need to continue to do. Good positive play on first down for Kentucky. Yeah, it sets up a, a pretty good situation. A second down and a long four. Flag down, handoff comes near side to Tony Dixon. He may have lost a yard or two on that. Asher Allen comes up to play the run. Boy, there is nobody better into the boundary than Asher Allen at the cornerback spot. He came up and just chopped the legs out of the running back. Outside receiver was motioning down in. He must have turned up a little bit quick. They were trying to get a crack back and get the back out on the edge. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players moving at once. Both did not reset for a full second. Penalties declined. Third down. 
Well, speaking of Asher Allen, it leads us right into our crystal nothing like it. And this week, the Jim Thorpe Awards semifinalists came out 13 total. And as you can see, five of those guys are from the SEC, including Asher Allen. Well, he plays their short side corner. He's always into the boundary, Dave. He's a guy that reads the run extremely well, and he did on that play. Kentucky, well, Kentucky will take a timeout, their second of the opening half, and we will step aside as well. Back in a moment. That's not Uga. No, it's Kentucky Blue on. There's Uga. Yeah, Uga seven. You know, Uga's the second heaviest the Uga. Do you know that? I didn't know that, no. <laughs> no there How about Randall Cobb? Cobb goes about 185, and he just sliced through that Georgia defense for a Wildcat first down. He's had a nice afternoon. Design quarterback draw. They get Rennie Curran blocked. Right here, Rennie Curran gets blocked, and Cobb gets right in behind the block. Excellent job of getting to that second level, and that's what we talked about in the drive where they scored the touchdown. Kentucky's doing a good job getting the linebackers blocked for Georgia. Kentucky might be onto something here with this little uh, pony offense. Offensive set, a little triple option. This time they'll line up in a traditional formation for Kentucky. Single setback. Tony Dixon. The Cobb will throw. Boy, has all day. Lofts it up through the hands of his intended target. Langster trying to break free of Prince Miller. But Randall Cobb. Well, I like it. Young man's getting fired up. He says he's not getting what he wants out of some players. He's letting them know. That's just a true freshman, folks. Alcoa, Tennessee was Mr. Football in Tennessee. Well, our first and ten line brought to you by Ickby Construction Management located in Choctaw, Mississippi. Another run pass option, and this time the option is to run it. And a good decision by Cobb. First down, Kentucky. Well, he got some tremendous blocks on the edge. Again, it's a run pass option for Cobb. And he decides right away, I'm going to tuck this ball away. He gets a ball from Langster, a block from Langster, and then a block from Dixon, the, the running back, to get him down the sidelines. Good blocking on the edge from the, from the outside receiver and the running back. You know, Cobb, a young man that comes from a program that had won four state championships. He's a winner, a former 2A player of the year in the state of Tennessee. Think about him a year ago playing high school football. Tony Dixon, another Kentucky first down. Prince Miller trips him up. What's happened to Georgia's defense is that Kentucky has had some success out on the edge. They know Cobb has the ability to get to the edge. So it's got those linebackers a little sitting back a little bit. And they're not moving as quickly on the inside run to fill. They're hesitating just to count, which is allowing them to get blocked. Good job that time of hitting up in there again. There's your outside receivers blocking at second, third level. Time out on the field. We'll step aside back after a word from your local stations. Kentucky trailing Georgia 14 to 7, but the Cats on the move for the second time here in the second quarter. Dave Neal, Mark Rick known for his calm demeanor, but after that last off tackle run by Tony Dixon, Rick ran out to the numbers on the far side, called a timeout, brought his entire defense around him, and he has been on their tail the entire timeout, sending a strong message. Thanks, Buzz. Handoff gets maybe a yard on first down and 10 to Dixon. But to follow up that story, I had a chance to talk to Coach Rick before the game today, and he was very cordial, but there is no doubt in my mind that he was locked in to today's game. I mean, the focus for him today, not that it's never there, but it seemed to be at a different level today before the game. Well, and I don't think there's any question the concern for Georgia was how would they respond after what happened to him against Florida. I think Kentucky's playing at a high level. I don't think you can discount how well Kentucky's playing. Let's not blame that Georgia's not here to play. I think Kentucky just raised their level a little bit today. Eighth play of the drive coming up as a completed pass to E.J. Adams. Well, Marcus Brown brings him down, but that'll still bring up a third down, and we'll call it uh, maybe five for the Wildcats. Well, Jorko Phillips, the offensive coordinator for Kentucky, is calling an outstanding game. He's doing a good job of using Randall Cobb's skills, get him out on the edge, throw the ball in the run, run the football. They're doing a nice job of mixing things up, creating problems for Georgia. Here 
goes Cobb to the 10, to the 5. Knocked down at the 3-yard line by C.J. Bird and Ramarcus Brown. A 16-yard pickup. It'll be first and goal, Kentucky. They, they told Randall Cobb, don't force the ball in there. You're an athlete. If you see man coverage in the secondary, go ahead and take off with it. And he saw an opening as he dropped the throw. There was nobody in the middle, so he took off. And then that's what he does best. The ball in his hands make people miss. John Connor back in at fullback. They'll give him the football, and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Roderick Battle, the first one on the spot for the Dogs. Take a look at our red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. You look at Kentucky this season inside the red zone. They are 11th in terms of touchdown percentage, just 13 TDs and 29 attempts. Yeah, that's not good. You, can, you can't be down that far. And, but I think this is a different dimension with Cobb in the backfield for them than they've seen all year long. Dixon and Smith. In it, running back alongside Cobb. He's in the shotgun. The inside handoff goes to Dixon. Stopped again at the line of scrimmage. Third and goal now. Georgia standing tall. Let's see if Joker Phillips decides to spread the field a little bit and give Cobb a run pass option. Maybe a quarterback draw or Cobb rolling right or left with a throw. There's, there he is right there standing. Georgia's defensive coordinator, Willie Martinez. You talk about a great football coach now, right there. Willie Martinez. On third and goal, here goes Cobb. Shakes and bakes for six. Kind of what we thought we were going to get, Dave. Joker Phillips decides to roll top to his right, a little run pass option, and he got a monster block from Tony Dixon on against Akeem Dent to get him to the edge. Touchdown is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Celebration penalty number 18. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. I want you to watch for the block from Dixon right here. Here's Dixon right here. He's leading the play. Watch for the block. And it's against number 51, Akeem Dent. And boy, Cobb just steps right in behind it. That block actually got three white jerseys. He got that edge guy. That's who was trying to seal the edge was Akeem Dent. Just took that right leg right out from under, left leg out from underneath him. One after is up and good. I'll tell you what, this Kentucky team had a chance to fold the tents after getting hammered for two touchdowns in the opening two Georgia drives, but Kentucky has responded to knot it up at 14. Georgia and Kentucky locked up at 14 with 7.15 to go here in the first half. Look at our Texas Pete scoring drive, another good one, 12 plays, 67 yards. Their first touchdown drive, 15 plays, 60 yards. Randall Cobb has been the man. You can't say enough about the fact that since they decided to make him the quarterback, he's now spent 95% of his time working at quarterback at practice, and I think we're seeing the results on the field. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Dave. He's grown as a player, as a quarterback, now back at home. He played quarterback, obviously, in high school, and he's a guy that, that feels comfortable there, but he needed to get the reps. He needed to get a feel for being in at quarterback. He's done a nice job. We've seen three facets of it, throwing it and running it. I don't know if we'll see the catching part of it, but it's probably coming. <laughs> He's already returned a punt, although it was a fair catch today. I didn't think we'd see him on the punt return team, but the way he's going, why not? Well, after the unsportsmanlike penalty in the end zone, Mastay will kick it off. And it's a short kick that hits at the 38, but Samuel will gobble it up and take it into Kentucky territory as a flag comes in late. But a pretty nifty return on what could have been a bad situation for Georgia. We'll wait on the call from Ken Williamson, our referee today. During the return, the block in the back, return team from the 28. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It'll be first and 10. 
Well, it's time to update our all tell text of war poll, and we asked you the question, who will have more yards of total offense? And Matthew Stafford winning that battle, although there are a lot of Randall Cobb fans in this building. I don't know that they got the word on texting to S1 or S2 to 55333. We'll keep you updated. Right now, Cobb 20 yards behind Stafford in total offense. Well, that's a pretty good battle within the battle, isn't it? First down and 10 after the penalty, Georgia still with good field position. Marino to the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Jarman, the junior out of Collierville, Tennessee, with the stop. Yeah, completely blows up the play because Georgia loves the soft toss, weak side. And his job, he steps through and blows up Ben Jones, the, the center, trying to pull out in front. Jeremy Jarman. Another tackle for loss by this defense. They came in with 61 on the year. Play fake to Marino. Stafford fires a bullet pass is caught by Michael Moore. Still on his feet. Moore to the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 11-yard line by Braxton Kelly. But Stafford stepped up and threw a rope to Moore. Yeah, Moore's matched up against the nickel bat. Ro Robbie McAtee straight across the middle and a well-thrown ball by Matthew Stafford. And then an excellent run after the catch by Moore. Lindley has to come over and save a touchdown. But an excellent, accurate throw by Matthew Stafford. A gain of 46 arch puts Georgia just outside the 10-yard line. Marino, a single setback. Marino dancing around, just not a lot of room for no Shaw. Take a look at our red zone powered by Honda generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. You look at Georgia this season inside the red zone. They are tied for fourth in the league in terms of touchdowns. They are 62, almost 63 percent. Mark Rick flat out says we can't settle for field goals in this part of the field. We can't do it. But last week they had to. Out of the eye, play fake Marino over the middle. Pass caught, touchdown Georgia. Sean Chappas, the fullback. That re re reminiscent of the touchdown that Georgia beat Tennessee on a few years ago. P33, I think, was the play call. Veron Haynes was the fullback. This is a play fake. Chappis is going to release straight up the middle. He's matched against Braxton Kelly. And you're right, Dave. Veron Haynes against Tennessee. Very reminiscent right there. And the throw from Stafford on the money. Point after is up and good. That was also the call, I believe, of the hobnail boot of the legendary Larry Munson. Yeah, legendary call there in Georgia history. John Chappas right through the middle. He's an excellent pass catching tight uh, fullback. And it's something really Georgia has missed, that middle pass catcher. This is a team Georgia normally has a really good pass catching tight end. They've had to substitute a number. How many years has Georgia utilized the fullback down in the red zone? And I'm sure with the red zone problems they've had, they went back and looked at some things that were successful for them. And you called it right all the way back to the infamous uh, hobnail boot play. Uh, Georgia has had a history of a fullback that could not only block, but catch it, especially in red zone situations. Yeah, give some credit to Mike Bobo going back and finding a play that's been successful for him in the red zone. Winston Guy out of the end zone. Guy to the 30-yard line. Good return. So the Wildcats now will try to respond. They've done so already this afternoon. We've had quite the entertaining game. Well, you fall down 14 to nothing, and Kentucky did not keep sawing the wood, if you will. They, can, they stayed in there. That's something that... Mark Rick talks about all the time. Got a saw wood, just got to hang in there and keep going. Actually, Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator for Georgia. That means just hang in there, keep fighting. Cobb will throw, lofts it up. 
out of the reach of C.J. Bird. Rand Randall Cobb today has done a number of things quite well. Well, he mentioned his growth at quarterback, and a lot of it has to do with his reps and getting more and more practice time behind center because he's played some receiver and some running back. Cough this one up, but he's been a major part of why they've been able to climb back in this game. His ability to throw it, mix in the throw, but then his is his ability to run the football. Got in the end zone there to tie it at 14. Now Georgia up 21-14. On second down and 10, Tony Dixon. Boy, he did a wonderful job of picking up a couple of yards when he could have lost four. Rashad Jones finally brings him down, but that's kind of the thing that's been gnawing at Willie Martinez. They had a chance for a four-yard loss, and instead they give up a two- or three-yard gain. Yeah, the execution on defense, making sure you take care of your job. And I've noticed a little bit of a difference in Georgia now. Willie has decided to commit eight to the box because of what they're doing running-wise and matching up man coverage on the outside. Well, I never thought I'd see that number as... Uh, different as it was 131 yards for the cats on the ground but now they go through the air and a flag comes in a face mask on Daryl Gamble as Tony Dixon will have the first down with a gain of 19 and then you can add 15 more if that was the face mask or it could have been a horse collar couldn't really see but it was a personal 15. foul face mask on the defense number 50 15 yards and then the run, first and 10. You talk about execution, excellent execution on the screen pass. Langser, the wide receiver, comes in and gets a little chip block on Gamble, who's responsible for Dixon on the screen, and Dixon's out the gate. Willie Martinez is shaking his head. They had the defense design. Gamble had man coverage on Dixon, but Langser gets the block to spring Dixon on the screen pass. First down and 10 at the Georgia 33. Sell Allen along with Alfonso Smith in the backfield with Cobb. Thompson snapped it and had a free play. Instead, Kentucky will take the five yard gain from Alfonso Smith. Cade Weston it on the tackle. SEC fans, come see the new Ruby Tuesday and taste the delicious handcrafted burger starting at $5.99 all day, every day. Arch, it's a quarterback. Are you? Would you be disappointed that they didn't quick snap it there? And that's the one on the center, Dave. That's George Gonzalez has got to see that out of the peripheral vision and snap it to try to get the cheap five. Nothing Cobb can do at that point. It's on the center. Second down and five. Ball sits at the 28. Georgia showing four-man rush. Curran comes late, pass complete out of the 25-yard line to Kyrus Langster. Prince Miller brings him down, but that'll bring up a third down and we'll say two. And Georgia's challenging Kentucky to see if they can throw it versus man coverage. That time Cobb rolls right and throws the ball in the flat, flat to Langster against man coverage. So Kentucky executing in the toughest of situations. Well, Kentucky's had a tough time all year converting third downs today. They're pretty good, as you can see on our Academy Sports Down and Distance marker. It's third and two. And on third and two, Daryl Gamble will take down Randall Cobb. They will lose five on the play. And now you're looking. At a, at a bad situation, fourth down and long. Well, that's a situation here now where Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator, turns Gamble loose. He says, okay, we're going to gamble, no pun intended, that Cobb is going to try to sprint out. I'm going to run my linebacker through to that side, and that's what Daryl Gamble Boy, look at the wind howling. It is, it's, it is really hard to determine where the wind is coming when you're down on the field. It is, it's hard to figure this out, and I know each one of these coaches uh, also trying to figure it out. Well, there's the flag that Dave Baker talked about, the Vanderbilt flag, the one they point at is the direction of the wind. Now, that wind is blowing into Kentucky's face here. It's very, very difficult to hit a field goal from this range. That's why it looks like he sent out his offensive unit to go for it here. Lona Sieber, the kicker, one of two kickers that Kentucky has used, uh, just six out of 13, as long as 40. Tidlachka is three out of six, as long as 51, but the Cats are going to go for it on fourth and eight. They were looking at a third down and two just moments ago. 
They've converted two fourth downs already this afternoon. Three-man rush. Cobb drops the football, and he will turn it over to the Georgia Bulldogs. With 1.21 to go. Well, Georgia dropped back into a zone, thinking to try to limit the throw, make him throw underneath, and just a three-man rush from the Bulldogs. Looked like Battle might have got his arm in there and raked the ball out, and Cobb has to fall on the football. So good job of Georgia getting pressure with just a three-man rush, eight into coverage. So Georgia with a timeout left. 81 seconds to play before halftime. Here's Marino. He is tripped up at the 42 yard line. Shamari Moore in on that tackle. In a, two, a deep, two deep zone, five under zone by Kentucky. Gave up the underneath throw to Marino. Chased. He will get close to the first down. That'll be shy by a yard. He does get out of bounds, though, to stop the clock with 49 seconds to go. We'll go, go to Yahoo Sports to see over 50 Raycom Sports SEC football and basketball games. And for only $4.95 a month, you can hear thousands of audio broadcasts. Be sure and follow your team all season long at Yahoo Sports. That time Kentucky came with an extra rusher. David played man coverage in the secondary, and nobody from Georgia, from a receiver standpoint, came back to help his quarter, help their quarterback. Stafford does a nice job of getting out of bounds. Third down and one. Marino picks up the first down to midfield. Georgia will have a chance to get up to the line of scrimmage and snap it quickly with the clock stopped. Trying to hold on to that one timeout, Dave. Try to get this ball snapped without losing any time at the line of scrimmage. Stafford today, 7 out of 13. Going up top, looking for Massaqua. Incomplete. They will say it was uncatchable, so no flag as Lindley was on the coverage and Massaqua had a step on him. Well, and part of this is the win. Now you've got a win at, at the back of, of uh, Stafford and that's carrying the football down the field a little bit more than he's used to. And a good job of Lindley being there. And I don't think that there was any pass interference there. Our, our back judge immediately signaled uncatchable football, so no flag. 28 seconds to play and a timeout for Georgia. Trying to set up a little screen and it is read well by Ashton Cobb who slipped through some blockers and made the tackle. Georgia will have to burn their last timeout. This is something defensive coordinator Steve Brown had talked about. He knows how much Georgia likes to screen the football. They said we're going to sub in a defensive back to mirror the back. Great job by Cobb just to follow Marino to the left flat and be all over the screen. Excellent job. Well, folks, Geico is canvassing the country this year to get the fans input on all the best moments of the 2008 football season for tour updates, tour schedules, and your chance to take the Geico Best of 2008 fan poll. Check out bestofcollegesports.com. Score update, Wyoming leading 7 to nothing over Tennessee. South Carolina on top of Arkansas. And some early SEC action. Yeah, we'll talk about you know those three games. We might be someplace next week. We're not sure where. One of those South Carolina, Florida, and don't be mistaken, that defense in South Carolina has an opportunity to trip up the Gators. Boy, interesting dynamic in the in the in the league this week with the announcement of Philip Fulmer stepping down at the end of this season after 17 years. Tough business, this coaching profession. Oh. I like it where I'm at. <laughs> Stafford throws on the run. Pass incomplete. Looking for Chris Durham. 
Pitts, Stafford's roommate, trying to get his hands on it, just can't do it. Well, Kentucky went with their strength, and that's man coverage. Good job of Stafford extending the play. Durham lays out to try to make the catch, but it, it's a good job of Kentucky taking away initial throws and really flushing Stafford out of the pocket with a six-man rush. Men's first punt, 35 yards. Randall Cobb stands at the 10 with 10 seconds left. Boy, it's a good looking kick from Mims that Cobb will let hit and bounce into the end zone, and that will do it for the first half. Matthew Stafford, 8 out of 16 for 156 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Randall Cobb, 5 out of 8, 45 yards. But Cobb also on the ground, 45 yards rushing. Kentucky in a battle with Georgia. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Mark, you wanted to get your team off to a fast start. I don't think those first couple of series could have been any better for you. No, we started good, and then we, we finished pretty good, too. So we're in pretty good shape. It's the in-between part. That's got to give credit uh, to Kentucky for. They've given you some problems with that package with Cobb as he's gotten loose out there in the end. Well, he's a, he's a great athlete, and uh, it's hard to hem him up. He's uh, he's the extra runner with the extra blocker, and that that, make, that causes problems for you. All right, thanks, Thank Mark. You. We appreciate it. That's Mark Rick. His Georgia Bulldogs go to the locker room as they lead the Wildcats of Kentucky 21 to 14. Stafford, pressure comes, dodges, pump fakes, rolling, throwing. Touchdown, Georgia, A.J. Green. All right, we've got a 21 to 14 score here at Lexington is Georgia on top of the Kentucky Wildcats. Cats have had trouble with field goals, but how about my man, meteorologist T.J. Shock from 35, wearing a Dave Archer styled square toed shoe. Winning a free TV from the fine folks at P-Rats. It's going to go to a UK student of great entertainment. I'm telling you, what a great country. All right, let's go ahead and uh, send it upstairs. Dave Neal and Dave Archer as we get set to start the second half. Great ball game. Arch, I know you still got one of those square-toed shoes. I do, I do, and it's it's uh, the black one, too. It's beauty. There's, there's a lot of things going through my man's mind right now, but let's not go down. <laughs> you know, this was uh, an interesting first half. Obviously, Georgia came out here and put it to Kentucky early on, but give Kentucky a lot of credit. But Stafford was sharp early. Yeah, four-play drive to start the game off. Blown coverage. He finds Massaqua for the touchdown. Then right back. Next time they got the football, Marino pounds it in. Kentucky did not waver, though. Dixon gets in on the touchdown. They found something with that pony offense with Cobb running the football. Dixon running it. Cobb gets in the end zone. And right before the end of the half here, Good play call here. A little play action fake to get Chappas the football on the play action pass. Take a look at our infinity first half statistics. The big one though on the scoreboard, Georgia leads to 21 to 14, but I'm surprised Kentucky with 126 yards on the ground. And Dave, what you don't see there on the numbers, the third down conversions. Kentucky came in converting at just 29%, five for nine in the first half on third down. Well, folks, in the SEC, every yard can make a difference. In this season, that's doubly true all season long. Regions Bank has been celebrating live green checking and savings with SEC yards for trees. Regions will plant a tree for each yard gained by both teams in the SEC game of the week. Through their first 10 games of the season, Region has committed to plant 7,264 trees around the, uh, the southeast. You can learn more, as always, by visiting regions.com slash green. The dogs coming back out for some second half football. Should be an interesting 30 minutes. Stay with us right here on Raycom Sports. A great fall day here in Lexington. Let's go back inside Commonwealth Stadium where, as always, SEC football presented in high definition where available by Raycom Sports. Dave Baker had a chance to catch up with Rich Books. Rich, rough start, but your guys got their feet underneath and made a nice comeback in the first half. Well, I don't know who that was in the first quarter, uh, first half of the quarter anyway. We, that's not who we are, and uh, we finally started playing our kind of football a little bit. It's got the game back in perspective. Thanks, Rich. We Thank appreciate you. it. Best of luck second half. That's Rich Brooks, Dave. Thank you, Buzz. 
And I think they really stumbled onto something here with this pony offense. It has caused Georgia some problems. It's uh, as Joker says, it's basically, you know, they call it the pony with the uh, two tailbacks alongside Cobb, but it's basically just a triple option. It really is, and it, all it is is accentuating what Randall Cobb does. His ability to get out on the edge, throw the football, and then get him out there where he can run the ball. Kentucky's done a nice job of incorporating some things to get him on the move running and, and throwing the ball. He's done an outstanding job in the first half. Well, Kentucky will get the football first. You look at the first half possessions under Joker Phillips' offense, and they had a punt, and they actually had a third down and one on their opening drive and lost some yards and had to punt it away. And a couple of touchdown drives in there. You know, Dave, while we have a moment here, I'd like to throw a big shout out to Chip Lindsay, the head football coach at Lassiter High School in Cobb County. You know, you and I love the high school football across the Southeast. Chip comes over from Hoover High School. Installs a new offense. They go eight and two and make the playoffs. Big shout out to those guys in Cobb County. Great turnaround by Chip Lindsay at Lassiter High School. Cobb County, of course, in the great state of Georgia. Well, fertile, fertile recruiting ground. Both these teams spent a lot of time in Atlanta and the surrounding areas recruiting kids. Kentucky's had great success down in Lagrange, Georgia. So Kentucky will get the football first, taken by Tony Dixon. Dixon out to the 30. Tony Dixon out to the 34 and a half yard line. Brought down by Daryl Gamble. A 27 yard return. And here come the Wildcats. So if you're Rich Brooks, if you're Joker Phillips, uh, you got to like where you are right now. You're, you're down seven, but you got to feel like your offense with a true freshman quarterback is, uh, has settled in nicely. Well, you gotta, it's about adjustments, and what do you do at halftime? Now, Willie Martinez leaves, realizes what they want to try to do. Let's see if he gets more people around the line of scrimmage to try, try to take away Randall Cobb. So Cobb checks with his quarterback coach on the near sideline, Randy Sanders, the former Tennessee ball offensive coordinator. And they settle on a little sweep play that will pick up about seven yards. Tony Dixon on the carry, run out of bounds by Daryl Gamble. But a good job of execution by Kentucky because Georgia gets to that eight man front late. They walk the safety Rashad Jones up, but they get him blocked. And that's what Kentucky's doing is they're executing on offense. And in the first half, we saw Kentucky do a lot of get to the line in a hurry and snap it quickly. Here's here in the first couple of plays of the second half. They will do a check with me. And that check went to the tailback Dixon and we'll get two would be about a yard shy of the first down. That'll bring up a third down and one. Well, if Randall Cobb isn't a quarterback, that means Mike Hartline, the sophomore who got the start through the first seven games, is having to watch. You see 54% completion percentage, eight touchdowns, seven interceptions. He didn't take the announcement a couple of weeks ago very well, I guess, uh, publicly. As you might expect from a competitor. No question about it. You just don't want to call out your teammates, which got a little bit involved there, but he has mended the fences, and uh, they certainly are on board with Mike Hartline if he's able to play. A power running game. Alfonso Smith will pick up the first down. Not over the 45. They will spot it at the 48-yard line. Rennie Curran with his eighth tackle already. Curran had a career high earlier this year when he went with 14 against LSU and Alabama. Well, baby, you don't say this much about a Georgia front, but Kentucky's pushing them around a little bit. They have been since midway through the first quarter with this running game. Little option. Toss sweep goes to Alfonso Smith. Smith with excellent speed, a 4 2 140 type guy. If he can ever get that corner, could be big trouble. Well, one of your early MVPs for Kentucky is John Connor, the fullback. He's done an outstanding job out in front of these running plays. Got a good block to get Cobb in the end zone in the first half, and a good block there to get Smith out on the edge. Look at our Woodman of the World scoreboard, and the biggest number in there was Tennessee down 13 to nothing at the half. South Carolina leading Arkansas as well. 
quick throw and catch. E.J. Adams with the reception. That's good enough for the first down inside the dogs. 40, Asher Allen on the coverage. He saw Cobb look to the sideline once he got underneath. What he did is he looked over and said, and they got a signal to him, hey, George is playing off at the corner spot. Asher Allen's playing off. I'm going to shoot it out quickly outside, and he gets the ball to E.J. Adams on the hitch route. Thirteen first downs for Kentucky. There's that look to the sideline, looking for a signal. That's caught near side. Addie Yimmy, the freshman out of Miami, the true freshman. Prince Miller in on the tackle. And, you know, you look down at the Kentucky wild, uh, wide receivers, and you look down and you see sophomore, freshman, freshman, junior, freshman, freshman, freshman. For the most part, this is a glorified high school all-star team with the injury to Dickie Lyons, Jr., who's out for the year. With your quarterback, a true freshman as well. So, I mean, it, you're right. Dixon, and he's got some room first down and then some. Well, that could have been a big time misfire, but instead, Dixon shows some great hand eye coordination. He really did, Dave. The pitch was a little too hard, far out front, but what I want you to look for is John Connor, 38. Number 38, watch the block. He gets the block on Bird, and there's nobody there for Georgia as Dixon's up the field. John Connor's been a monster out in front on these run plays. Down and 10 at the 23-yard line. Eighth play of this drive coming up. There's the man you're talking about that had had some nice blocks. He gets the carry and will pick up six. Rashad Jones, the sophomore safety out of Atlanta, makes the tackle. Well, and that's the play you have to be successful with if you're going to run the dive option is you've got to have a presence in the middle. And they sprinkle that in, get Connor up through the middle to freeze those linebackers to allow Cobb and Dixon to get out on the edge. A wide side of the field option. Here's Dixon. A flag comes in. And a hold against Kyrus Langster. And everybody in the building knew it. Holding on the offense, number 81. 10 yard strike has got the foul. Repeat second down. Now, this young receiver core has done an outstanding job so far in the game block. And this time, Langster gets called for the hold against Prince Miller who was working on the corner spot. That's a long block. You have to hold for a long time. Here's the hold right here. There he is working against Prince Miller. And it allowed Dixon to get around the edge. No question about the call. But you can't say enough about what this young receiver core, Dave. You mentioned how young they are, how well they're doing out on the edge, blocking against a pretty veteran secondary. That'll back him up. Second down and 11 now. A little reverse. Cobb comes back to lay a block. And Addy Yimmy run out of bounds, and Kentucky wants a late hit flag. Nothing happening there. You can see Rich Brooks is extremely upset. He felt like the hit came outside the white line. The excellent job of Georgia defending the reverse. Corby Irvin gets up the field, and how about the athlete that Cobb is to knock Irvin off the tackle and allow Addy Yimmy to try to minimize the damage, but. Good job of Georgia seeing the reverse and creating a bad play for Kentucky. So one yard, uh, excuse me, a four yard loss. Third down and 15 now. Trying to set up a little screen. They hit Dixon. Georgia has some white jerseys around there, but Dixon able to get close to the original line of scrimmage. Rennie Curran in on the tackle, and this will be a field goal opportunity now for the Wildcats, and this has been an area of concern for the head ball coach here at Kentucky. Well, Dave, good job of Dixon getting upfield with north and south of football and really gained eight yards for, for Lona Sieber to come in and try this field goal. You mentioned how much he struggled, one for seven at 30 yards or more. And the only one he's hit beyond that distance is from 40 yards, and that's exactly what this field goal will be. Tidlachka and Sieber have combined to go just nine of 19 in the field goal department this year. 
Mass State to hold. Field goal is on the way, and it is good. So that'll cut the Georgia lead to four after the 40-yard field goal. And Georgia stands tall after Kentucky started moving the ball pretty well on their opening drive of the second half. Back to Lexington after the... Got ourselves a four-point game on a cool, crisp afternoon at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. After the field goal, Tim Maste will kick it away for the Cats. Richard Samuel will take it at the five. Samuel out to the 25 to the 26 yard line. Now there's a young man in a short sleeve shirt. I don't want to get, uh, I'd like him in a dark alley with me late at night. It sounds like he <laughs> might be one of the tougher guys in this ballpark today. It is a cold day with the wind blowing. Stafford to fire. Flag down. That's caught by Massaqua. And the play is blown dead. Looks like somebody might have gotten a head start by the on the dogs. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 89, five yard penalty remains first down. Georgia's done a nice job today. They are the most penalized team in the conference. But pretty quiet today in the penalty department. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Buzz. Yeah, Dave, keep an eye. Josh Anderson, who's their big right tackle, starting offensive tackle, 335, limped off at the end of the half, got a boot on his right foot. He's out for the game, so a young offensive line gets even younger. Here's Marino. Spins out to the 25. Give him a couple on the play. Shamari Moore in on the tackle. And uh, yet, when Justin Anderson, who was a redshirt freshman, goes down, and now you're bringing in another guy, and they just don't have many bodies left. No, they're, they're really getting thin at the offensive line. Josh Davis is that young man that comes in. And in fact, Josh Davis was the man that pulled around on that play and got in front of Marino in the block. But they mentioned they wanted to play Josh Davis some anyway. Uh, he started game one of the season uh, at right tackle. So he's not a stranger to being on the field. Second down and 13. Four man rush forces Stafford out of the pocket and a flag comes in. And that young offensive line just didn't hold up against the front four of Kentucky. Jenkins. And it's just pressure from the front four. Jenkins is going to get the sack. Ventrell Jenkins is going to get the ultimately get the sack, but really it's a team sack because of the pressure. This is a defense that had 23 sacks coming in. They were second in the SEC only to Vanderbilt, so they've been able to get after the passer all year long. Yeah, this front four arch, 83 tackles, 23 tackles for loss, and 12 sacks coming into today as a front four. That's pretty good. Little pressure. Georgia will try to set up a screen, and that was nearly intercepted by Jeremy Jarman. It went right through his arms, and the dogs will have to punt. Well, they get some good pressure to Matthew Stafford's left side. They're trying to set up the screen, and Jarman reads it. Jeremy Jarman, number 99. Look at Jarman get those hands in the air and bat it away from Nojan Marino. They really had it set up pretty well, too. Good job by Jarman. To elevate and knock the ball down. There is no question that there was some room to run if Jarman doesn't knock that ball down. That was a, a good play call. Just Jarman kind of snuffed it out a little bit. Hey, execution. He, he saw it, knocked it down. To credit the credit Jarman. Great play. So Mims will punt it away. Mims with a couple of punts today, averaging 43 yards per punt. Mims comes in with a long of 77 earlier this year against South Carolina. Could use one of those right here if you're a Dogs fan. Nine men on the front for Kentucky here. And here they come. And they get it! <laughs> Danny Trevathan with the block, and Kentucky is set up first and goal. Dave, there was no question from the pre-snap look Georgia actually had to walk in one of their gunners to the outside, and Danny Trevathan comes clean. 
right through the middle along with Michael Swindell. Number 41, Swindell is the guy that ends up getting the block. So Kentucky looking at a first and goal and Cobb dancing to the outside, trying to sneak in. Touchdown, Kentucky. Talk from the top about what a dynamic athlete this kid is, and all it is a straight run for Cobb. It was a quarterback draw designed to go through the middle. He found a little day's daylight to the edge, and he just got snuck it in the end zone and left, left pylon. The fifth rushing touchdown for Randall Cobb, his second today. Receivers point after up and good, and just like that. Kentucky, which has had plenty of special teams problems this year, finally get one that results in a touchdown for the Cats. 24-21, Kentucky on top of Georgia. Maste will kick it off once he gets set. Maste. Young man with an outstanding leg leads the SEC with 19 touchbacks on kickoffs this year. There's the man who provided the spark that led to the touchdown, Danny Trevathan. Go back and take a look at that block in a minute by Kentucky, a team that has had five of their own kicks blocked this year. They have now blocked four this season. So minus one in that department. So somebody's going to have to come in and hold this as Mass Day's T not doing the job. Hey, let's go back and get credit where credit's due. I said, I said Trevathan, it's or I said Swindell, it's Trevathan right through the middle, number 41. Danny Trevathan gets the block, and that was the key play that allowed Cobb to get in the end zone, but really untouched. Danny Trevathan right through the middle. Yeah, that's just a breakdown. Untouched up the middle. All right. Mass day. Crushes this about six yards deep, and Samuel will have to take an ace. So that's touchback number 20 on the year for the Cats. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Buzz. Boy, Dave, just in the time we've seen Kentucky this year, it's been feast or famine with this kicking game, had it? First of all, a few weeks ago here against South Carolina, they block a field goal, looked like they were about to get the game back in perspective, and Captain Munderland brings it all the way back for six. And then we saw him in Florida in the first quarter. It was a nightmare for Tim Maste. He's still having flashbacks. But then last week, they get a block of an extra point that preserved the win against Mississippi State. And that block just moments ago, which has turned the momentum completely around. We'll see what Georgia can do with some momentum on the other side right now. Handoff. Marino gets a yard, maybe. Micah Johnson in on the tackle. Boy, Kentucky, I, I give Rich Brooks some credit. You know, this club was down 14 to nothing. They were just getting lambasted. Georgia doing whatever they wanted to do. Kentucky's offense stuttering and sputtering. He calls a timeout. And after that timeout in the first quarter, his club has come out and done a number today. Marina was a monster the first two series of the game. They got that settled in, and they've limited him to virtually nothing since then. Stafford today, 8 out of 17. He does have 156 yards, but the running game not there at this point. Corey Peters brings down no Sean Marino. Well, this is a defensive front. Really the heart and soul of this defense, really the team, is their defensive front. Here Peters just fights off the block of Ben Jones, the freshman center, to make the play. Steve Brown, defensive coordinator. This is a defense that has held three opponents to under 100 yards passing. And done a nice job against the run. This time, Stafford's pass to Massaqua is complete for the first down on a third and eight. A clutch throw and catch for the Dogs. Well, they got the man matchup. Shamari Moore trying to work. One-on-one -on -one with Massaquah. 
does a good job of work in the middle of the field. Good protection that time up front for Georgia to allow Stafford to stand in there and wait. Our Woodman of the World scoreboard. How about North Carolina? Wow. Getting the best of Georgia Tech right now after Tech got uh, held on against Florida State last weekend. Stafford, quick throw to the outside. Here's Massaqua. Oh, needed a block. Michael Moore's receiver out in front. Probably got the block a little too early. It's one of those tough situations for Michael Moore. He's going to have to try to block Samari Moore out in the flat. But a good job of playing off the block. Moore, the guy that just got beat on the route inside by Massaqua, this time comes up and makes the tackle on the quick screen to the outside. Our first and 10 line brought to you by Ickby, construction management located in Choctaw, Mississippi. Georgia looking at a second down. We'll call it four. They'll work out of the shotgun again. Three man rush. Pass is caught by Durham. Boy, he drove his man back and then had plenty of space to catch and turn. He did, Dave. He does a nice job of running the deep curl route, but no Sean Marino runs a flat route to that side to open that hole or pull, pull it open for Durham to hook up in the hole. And, and he and his quarterback were right on the same page. Complimentary routes that create the opening. Nice job there, a nice design by Mike Bobo's offense. That picks up the first down. Now George is moving the football. Over the middle, looking for more. What a throw. Down to the 25-yard line. First down dogs, a gain of 22. And Stafford just threaded the needle. Michael Moore going down through the middle of the field. And Micah Johnson, the middle linebacker, is the guy responsible for that vertical, number four. He does not turn his head. And you teach a quarterback, if the defender's got his head to you, you can shoot it in there. He did a nice job of shooting it into Michael Moore. Right over the fingertips of Micah Johnson, the linebacker. And that sets Georgia up at the 25. Stafford up over 200 yards a game. Uh, again. Here's a toss sweep. Marino to the 20. Well, Kentucky has been battling injuries all year, and they might have just suffered another one for more on that. Let's go to Dave Baker. Yeah, Dave, we don't know how serious it is yet, but certainly Trevard Lindley is a guy. He has been Kentucky's number one defender. He leads the club in pass breakups. He's over on the Wildcat bench right now. He's got a strange right quad. He's got tendonitis in it. Trader Jim Madalino said he didn't know whether he was going to be back or not, but they're sitting him out this series, and that's a big loss in that secondary. Boy, big is an understatement as the dogs Approach their eighth play of this drive. They will hand it off to Marino. First down, breaking tackles to the five. Touchdown. What a run for no Sean Marino. And Georgia is back in front. Boy, he's so hard to get on the ground. No Sean Marino with his spin move. He lays two Kentucky Wildcats in his wake. Micah Johnson, number four, is going to be the first guy to miss the block. Actually, he steps right through that tackle of Ashton Cobb and then steps away from McAtee to get in the end zone. About the stiff arm from Marino as the point after is up and good by Walsh. He just threw a couple of defenders. Georgia answers big time against Kentucky. 28-24 with 3.21 to go in the third. And Boy, Trevard Lindley, that's him with the uh, ice pack on his knee, and that is not good news. One of the best cover corners in the country. Uh, I don't think there's any question. He's he's one of the best you'll ever see. Uh, Lindley, 35 consecutive starts for this Wildcat defense, and he is the guy that's the matchup guy. But the guy of the hour right now is that guy right there, Noshan Marino. What an answer by Georgia to come back and get a score. Well, Marino now 16 carries, 87 yards as that drive went eight plays and 80 yards. Marino had 27 of those on the drive. Stafford, three out of three for 53 yards. Boy, when they're clicking like that, they are impressive. Kickoff taken by Winston Guy on the near side. Ran right into his own man and will get out of bounds at the 30. Tim Mastay of Kentucky also on that draddy list. Here's Cobb, his pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. 
Now we'll see what Georgia's defense has in store for this Kentucky offense. They'll line up in a traditional eye. Little option near side. Toss sweep comes to Dixon, and he'll be hammered out of bounds by Roderick Battle. Boy, he ran right into a wall. Boy, an excellent job on that side by uh, Irvin and Roderick Battle. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Dave loves seeing a chess game between coordinators. Interesting to see what happens. Kentucky is just about totally retooled their offense going to this option look. Willie Martinez likes to bring the heat. You see what happens when he keeps Randall Cobb in the pocket as that pass was blocked down. Interesting to see if he goes with more or less pressure now, Arch. Then El Ever Ellerby has come in at linebacker and he'll rush off the edge, number 33. And here he comes. Kentucky picks it up. They'll go with a screen pass to Alfonso Smith. We'll take it out over the 35. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation, and the Cats will have to punt it to Georgia. Some of those changes that Buzz was talking about on defense, Ellerby, who's normally their starter, middle backer, started today. He's been banged up, but they found a home for him to come in, come in on passing situations to rush the passer off the edge. That time, a good job of defending the screen pass by Georgia. We just talked about Brian Mims a moment ago, the Georgia punter. How about uh, Tim Maste? He's a young man that spent some time in Ghana over the summer painting some schools and wants to be in the Peace Corps. Spent some time in Africa after his Kentucky football career is over, and he just booms one. Off the fingertips of Prince Miller into the end zone. He'll try to run it out and gets it to the two. Well, that's a bad mistake by Prince Miller. He muffed the kick. He could have taken a knee in the end zone, and the ball would have come out to the 20, but he panics here, thinking, I got to get out of here because I've touched it. He could have taken a knee right there, and the ball would have come out to the 20, but he panics, and Kentucky does a great job. Sam Maxwell comes in and layers the ball. Oh, that was on Prince Miller. All the way around, not a good trip for Prince Miller. But George is now just outside their own two. A 60-yard punt by Tim Maste. Maybe that trip to Africa may have to wait the way he's kicking the football. Here's Marino bouncing around to the five. We'll give him three on the carry. Brought down by Ashton Cobb. Well, this offense really mixed a lot of things in. They've run and throw, and Stafford was extremely sharp. Marino got back on track after being really stopped the last couple quarters, and Massaqua was the guy that stepped up and made a couple grabs. I pose this question to you. Where in the world is A.J. Bryant? I mean, excuse me, A.J. Green, the wide receiver for Georgia, who comes in, you know, leading the SEC in receptions and yards. I think you got to credit the outside coverage. David Jones and Trevard Lindley have done a nice job taking him out of the mix. Here's Marino hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Myron Pryor, the senior out of Louisville, Kentucky. Well, this front four is impressive today. They really are, Dave. They're physical. Myron Pryor, we talked about how he's banged up. He's playing through pain. Does a nice job of fighting off the blocks and gets around Marino's waist to put him on the ground and force Georgia into a third and long situation. Pryor battling a high ankle sprain. This is where this defense becomes very dangerous, Dave, because they have the ability to rush the passer with just four. So Stafford will be very careful about getting the ball out. Georgia three out of seven on third downs today. They're looking at a third down and seven right now, and the play clock came to zero, but they got the snap off. Here's Marino dancing around, and he needed to get out close to the 13, and they will mark it at about the 11. And that'll be fourth down. Johnny Williams in on the tackle. That looks like a. Kentucky might have caught, in a, caught a break here. They were trying to burn a timeout. Kentucky. First timeout this half. So they get the timeout, but they didn't get the timeout prior to the snap, and they get the stop on third down. There were three defenders signaling for a timeout before the snap. See, here it is, trying to get the timeout. Shamari. Is trying to get the timeout. They don't get it. They burn the timeout to try to make. Now Mims will have to come in and punt again to the win. That was a weird sequence. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the SEC. And today, we show you Jim Brown. The 89-year-old is attending his 409th consecutive Kentucky football game. He's seen every game in Lexington since 1938. 
with the exception of 1944 when he was serving in World War II as one of the Burma Bridge Bombers. He came to Kentucky uh, from the war just in time for the 45 season and has not missed a game since. And of course, that is the perfect champion. How do you play? That's incredible. Met a guy at Ole Miss that had seen over last week. Had seen over 400 straight Ole Miss games. Wow. I'm telling you, there is no better group of fans than right here in this conference. Fourth down and two. The dogs will punt it. Kentucky got a block on the last one. And this is a wobbly kick that maybe somebody got a piece of that bounces back to the 30-yard line. Somebody may have gotten a piece of that punt. Well, David looked like Winston Guy, the true freshman, tried to elevate and get his hand on this football. I don't know that he got this, but he certainly changed Mims' view of how he's going to kick it. He never got it to turn over. Boy. Excellent effort from Guy, number 19. But just a poor kick from Mims, and maybe because of the pressure. A 19-yard punt will set up Kentucky just inside the Dogs 30. Here goes Cobb. And that will do it for the third quarter. So we will flip-flop sides, and Georgia will have the wind at their back in the fourth. And the Cats will head into the fourth quarter down by four. It's been a fun-filled afternoon here in Lexington. 15 more. 28-24, Georgia leading Kentucky as we begin the fourth quarter. The Wildcats in a great scoring opportunity right now after a 19-yard punt inside the 25-yard line. Randall Cobb has gone the distance at quarterback this afternoon. Here's Cobb on a little keeper. Cobb, first down to the 15-yard line. Look at our AT&T. Stats through three quarters will show you that Kentucky is cracking it up on the ground today. 178 yards. You can add that 12-yarder to give him 190. Uh, Stafford's had an okay game. He's 12 out of 21 overall. But it's been this pony offensive attack that's been effective. And really, Randall Cobb. Yeah, that's the story. Randall Cobb is the story. And the fact they converted 6 out of 12 on third down at this point. Here goes Dixon. Touchdown, Kentucky. 15 yards. Well, the concern for Randall Cobb. Watch the block now from Jeffries. Pull it around number 76. Gets Rennie Curran on the ground right there. And Dixon is the benefactor as he gets into the end zone. But excellent job of Jeffries pulling around and getting one of the really good linebackers in the SEC on the ground to clear the way. Not many guys in the league have had, have had an opportunity to do that to Rennie Curran this year. Seaver's point after is up and good. The Wildcats didn't have to go far. Just 29 yards in three plays. Tony Dixon with the 15-yard scamper. It is a three-point Kentucky lead. 14-26 to play. Remember this, as this game goes on, and it could come down to a field goal here or there, Georgia does have the wind at their back. Mass day will kick it off. This will sail out of bounds, and Georgia will get it at the 40-yard line. You give Rich Brooks credit for taking that timeout right before the end of the third quarter to make Mims punt it into the wind. It's a little thing, but it ends up being a big thing to get a touchdown they did. Stafford to throw it up top. Looking for A.J. Green. It is caught inside the 20, down at the 18-yard line. I asked you where A.J. was. Now we know. Well, a good job up front to give Stafford enough time for this deep post route to go to work. A.J. Green working outside against David Jones. Really just an inside route. Now he runs by the safety. And an excellent job of going up and getting it. 6'4", 210-pound wide receiver goes up and takes it away from David Jones. Good protection up front, though to let Stafford let that one wait and get it out of there. 
a 42-yard pickup. Out of the eye formation, here's Marino. To the 10, five, touchdown, Georgia. Two plays, 60 yards, and Georgia is back out in front. Get the big pass play to A.J. Green, and now no Sean Marino gets in behind Cordy Glenn and Clint Bowling. Just a good job of blocking, good job by Glenn to clear the way, and Marino goes in untouched. Marino, three touchdowns this afternoon. The point after is up and good. He brings his total to 15 rushing touchdowns this season. That is tops in the Southeastern Conference. No Sean Marino, a playmaker that just made a play. Those are the balls from the three straight bowl games that Kentucky able to play in under Bear Bryant. The last time they were able to go to three consecutive bowls, they have that opportunity here with six wins this season, although that doesn't guarantee you anything in life, but it certainly gives you that opportunity. But a seventh win would certainly lock up that opportunity for Kentucky. Now, Walsh doesn't want to kick this out of bounds. He's had one go out of bounds. They don't want to give Kentucky the ball near midfield. This kick will sail a yard deep. Here's Winston Guy to the 20. Winston Guy on the run to midfield. Guy to the 30, to the 20, down to the five-yard line. A 96-yard return sets up Kentucky first and goal. Dave, I take that back. If you're a Georgia fan, maybe you do want to kick it out of bounds. Winston Guy takes this right a yard deep in the end zone. And how about this? He never breaks stride. Excellent job of blocking in the, in the wedge to allow Guy to hit it at full stride. And here it's just a matter of are you going to get in or not. And George is able to get him on the ground. Excellent hustle by Andrew Williams. What a return. Kentucky down four. Here goes the handoff to Dixon. Back pedals. Drives his way down inside the five. And about the four, Asher Allen runs him out of bounds. Take a look at a. Honda Red Zone presented by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience and Kentucky today inside the red zone. Four out of five, pretty good. That's what you're looking for. Convert to touchdowns. And the reason they've been this successful is because of Randall Cobb and his ability to run with the football. Cobb got a call from the sideline. He's changing the original play now. Cobb on a little keeper, dancing around. Cobb driving down to the wall. Did he get in? No. They'll say he's just short, about six inches shy of the goal line. And that'll make it third down and goal. Cobb comes out of the pile signaling, I got in. They're going to have to check this one upstairs. His quarterbacks draw all the way straight through. He gets in behind Zip Duncan. And now Duncan's going to help try to push his quarterback. Watch 72, Zip Duncan try to pick his quarterback and get him in the end zone. I think he ended up just shy. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. This has been where John Connor's been solid. And I think we might look at this. Uh, here comes the replay crew. Under further review. You know, we'll take another look. I don't know if the nose of that ball actually hit the goal line or not. Maybe we can get one more look at it. Well, the one thing I know is we have been horrible at predicting whether this is yeah. going to get flipped. We're not going to be asked to review any plays. <laughs> that's that's a certainty. Looking for the nose of football just to crack the goal line, and it's it's you can't see anything from that angle. He'll extend the football as he starts to go down. You know, it's one of those things where you kind of need a, that side angle. Right there's the extension of the football before he was on the ground. See, and that that look right there, that look kind of tells you. Now watch. See where his knee is, still 
above the ground. I think that's got to be oh, a touchdown. There you go. There, great shot. That's got to be six. That's got to be a six you're for gonna, Kentucky. But then again, go. we're 0 for 8, I think. So you're going to go on the line. Kentucky fans it. don't want us to comment about this. <laughs> Boy, what an effort from Randall Cobb, the true freshman quarterback, battling in traffic, having the sense to stick the ball out, yet protect it, not wanting to lay it on the ground. He's been spectacular today, Dave, Randall Cobb. Cobb today, 13 carries, 71 yards. Throwing the football, he's 9 out of 13 for 66. So you got to honor the pass with him. While it may not be a deep pass, but here is our official announcement. After review, ruling on the field stands as call. Oh. Third down. 0 for 9. I don't know. I don't know what they're the looking for. The guy at home sees what we see, so that's all I can tell yeah. you. I don't know what they're looking for. It looked like to me put the nose of the ball on the goal line. Well, we'll see if he gets it in right here. Cobb with a sneak. Touchdown. Didn't matter. And the Cats go back out in front. Three rushing touchdowns today for the true freshman out of Alcoa, Tennessee. And it's the way he's led his team, Dave. He's been outstanding in the leadership category. He's not put the ball to ground. He's not thrown the ball to the other team. He's done a nice job. He's done a great job of taking care of things. He did have the one fumble, I guess, earlier in the game, but he's done a nice job of directing this football team. Sieber on to attempt the point after to make it a three-point game, and he does so. Back and forth we go. Just another routine Saturday in the Southeastern Conference. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Raycom Sports is prohibited. Once again, Mass Day has to come and reset the ball atop the tee. Boy, the tees have changed over the years. Remember the, the long pointy things that if you fell on it would crack, crack a rib? Remember those? <laughs> yeah, I remember those. <laughs> this has gotten to the, and it falls over again. Mass Day is going to have to have a, one of their safeties on kickoff coverage unit to come in and hold the football. But uh, this win has been unbelievable, Buzz. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Yeah, and that's a great point, Arch Chris. Here's what happens now. Watch what happens on the kickoff. You see it blowing it off the tee. It's caused a problem keeping it inbounds as well. Georgia has had three short fields, one because of a Kentucky celebration, two because Mastay's kicked it out of bounds. Those two have resulted in touchdowns. And, of course, the last time Kentucky with that big kickoff return, they took advantage of a short field as well. Well, that's a good kick into the wind by Mastay. Samuel takes it at the goal line, dropped at the 22-yard line. Crowd here in Kentucky reacting to the fact that Louisville is getting pounded by Pittsburgh. Here's a toss sweep, little reverse now. Here comes A.J. Green. He gets a block. Green to the 40 and run out of bounds near midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Stafford to throw. It's Massaqua. Loses the football. Kentucky had it, but do they retain it? Yes, they will. Georgia coaches will want forward progress and the ball to be blown dead. Mark Richt is coming off the bench to talk to somebody about that. But I don't think it's going to matter. Well, Massaqua is going to catch his football. Good rush, makes the ball get out late and high. Now Massaqua battling has the ball ripped out. Looked like Braxton Kelly came in and ripped the football out from his linebacker spot. Number 56 right there. Big hit. Ball on the ground. Well, that ball was somewhat uh, coming loose before Kelly was able to get over there and knock it free. Goes the pitch to Tony Dixon. Boy, he is surrounded by white jerseys, nowhere to go. And this is an opportunity 
right now for Willie Martinez's defense and he talked to us about quick change you got to be able to make a stop defensively they didn't do it last week when Georgia turned it over four times two guys stepped up and did that for him a team did CJ Bird right there as you look at the turnover story Well, Cobb did a nice job throwing it down at the feet of Tony Dixon. Nothing was there. Georgia showing a four-man look up front. They will bring three, and that's enough to flush Cobb, who is grabbed by the jersey from behind. The pass goes incomplete. Jarius Wynn had a hand on the jersey of Cobb and forces a punt by Kentucky. So Georgia stands tall. Boy, Mass Day averaging 57. Point five yards per punt. This one into the wind will just die around the 20 yard line in a interfering with the opportunity to catch the football and flags come out. Winston Guy got a little too close to Logan Gregg. Now Remarcus Brown is trying to block and another Georgia player trying to get a block there but Guy gets in the way of the kick and the ball hits him right in the back. So. Ray didn't have a chance to come up and catch that cleanly. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. The kicking team, number 19. Well, Kern will watch his offense try to get Georgia the lead once again as the dogs are down three. Hand off to no Sean Marino. Marino slips out of a tackle and gets it out over the 41. And exactly what Rich Brooks keeps saying. As a late hit comes in, but you got to wrap up no Sean Marino. Stafford going up top. Off the fingertips of A.J. Green. David Jones on the coverage. Boy, when the way Kentucky plays with a lot of man coverage, maybe, maybe a safety helping. But they kind of they kind of forced the issue. They want you. They're kind of like begging for the deep ball. When we talked to Steve Brown yesterday, Dave, and they said what they wanted to do, something they hadn't seen a lot on film, was they wanted to be physical with these receivers to the line of scrimmage. Maybe why you haven't seen AJ Green very much. The young freshman has had to deal with a lot of press coverage. But they've done a nice job of coming up. Now Trevard Lindley out of the game. I mentioned Randall Burden, the redshirt freshman, lined up on Massaquah at the bottom of the screen. Massaquah, the senior out of Charlotte. Here's Stafford. Over the middle, there's Massaqua wide open. And that'll be a dog first down, and he coughed it up. It's loose. Kentucky has it at the 38-yard line. Are you kidding me? Robbie McAtee with the fumble recovery. Well, two consecutive series now. Massaquah has laid the ball on the ground. This one's going to be a huge play. Crossing route. Stafford lets it thin out, and then he's going to dump it to Massaquah coming across the field. First of all, the ball's in the wrong arm on the inside. There comes Micah Johnson in. Micah Johnson hammers the ball out, and then Robbie McAtee, the nickelback, is going to get the recovery. He to have that ball on the outside arm, keep it away from, uh, keep it out of harm's way, and Micah Johnson nailed it out of there. And this play will be reviewed. They're going to see if the ground caused that fumble. And here is another look. I'm not going to form an opinion here. I'm going to let you form this one. Uh, good job on the crossing route. Massaquah comes underneath. Now he's got the ball on the inside arm, and there's the hit from Micah Johnson. And the ball comes out. Doesn't tell you much, though, on whether or not that ball was on the ground when it popped free. Here is a good angle. Let's see if that. Well, there's no question, but I, you know, we've been so good at this. Like I said, I'm not going to form an opinion. You're not going to form an opinion. No. You know what, Dave? I'm going to go out on a limb here, try to change the tide. Okay. This is a fumble, and Micah Johnson gets credit for jarring it out of there. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Hey, Arch, it's one of those situations. You've played in games like this before, obviously a lot at Iowa State. Now, the, now this is names Iowa weather, but I mean, it's cold down here now, and that ball is to the point where it's getting hard and slick, and both sides have really been laying some hits out there. Not only do you have that element going, you've got the wind, and then the sun is directly behind the press box. I'm across the field at the 20 from you guys, and if you look back over to that side of the field, it's about impossible to see, and then you've got a quarter of the field in shade. Tough going right now. Yeah, I just... After, After that review, report, you went when it snows. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Ball is fumbled. Touchdown, Kentucky. Dave Archer 
breaks the streak. We stemmed the tie. <laughs> right. It's a team thing. Well, here's another sudden change opportunity for this Georgia defense. 9.28 to play. Inside handoff. Alfonso Smith will get eight. Cor Corby Irvin had his arms around Alfonso Smith and he just fought out of the tackle. We've seen some really good running day from both sides of the field and not going down on an initial hit. A lot of guys keeping their legs churning and getting upfield. And remember, Kentucky's offense is doing this without their leading rusher, Derek Locke, who was out for the year with a injured knee. So they've had to rely on the combination of Dixon, Smith, Allen, and now Cobb, the man with the football here. Look at Cobb run into Georgia territory, excuse me, Kentucky territory at the 46-yard line. Rashad Jones steps up and makes the stop. Dave, again, the dimension of Randall Cobb's ability to run. Good block on Gamble right there by Alfonso Smith. Gets him on the ground, and then Cobb hits it up in there and fights for extra yardage. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Archie, you know the best leadership comes from within. Just moments ago, Matthew Stafford had all the specialists gathered around him over there on the Georgia bench and was given the do better talk. A situation, though, with a senior stepping up and showing that leadership. And the handoff goes to Alfonso Smith. Well, you love that from your quarterback. I think we've seen it from Randall Cobb as a freshman, and of course, Joker Phillips trying to guess where pressure's going to come from and try to get Cobb the best opportunity. There's Cobb running right into the heart of that Georgia defensive front. And linebacker Rennie Curran, who is now with 11 stops this afternoon. You know, Rennie Curran's a guy that almost quit the game of football in high school, wanted to be an offensive player. His coach said, we need you a linebacker. And he was like, I don't know if I want to do this or not. And he nearly quit the game. And all he's done is hit people since <laughs> then. Right. Yeah, he flies. He, what, a, what an excellent player. Play. Started the last four games of last year, and all of a sudden they found that, you know what? We've got quite a football player on our hands. Not only that, the young man plays drums in his church choir. He's banging the defensive drum right now. Needs a big play here. Cobb to throw. Langster with the catch, first down Kentucky as he steps out of bounds. They have been really good on third downs today. Uh, they are eight out of 15 on third downs. No Here goes Dixon. Maybe a yard on the play, and the clock continues to move closer to six minutes. Breaks the tackle of Daryl Gamble and gets a couple of yards on the play. Maybe I'll give him a yard, and that'll bring up third down. Corvey Irvin hit on the tackle, but Gamble had a chance for a big loss. Yeah, they came with some a linebacker stunt. Gamble comes through the middle and just doesn't wrap him up. And Cobb, who's done a number of great things since he's already been, since he's been here in Kentucky in his young career, running with the football, makes another big play there. Kentucky able to break the tackle. Loose football. And the Wildcats fall on top of it. The fullback, or excuse me, Tony Dixon. Georgia nearly got a piece of it. But a high kick that Gray will field at the 15-yard line. So I think on both ends, four-man rush. Stafford over the middle, Massaqua with the catch, breaks some tackles in a foot race. Massaqua cuts it back at the 30, down to the 15, to the 10, and knocked out of bounds inside the 10 That's at the seven yard line by Robbie McAtee. And the Dogs are looking at a first and goal. 
And you can bet that Matthew Stafford, when he talked to the guys on the sideline, he told Massaquah, hey, get ready, I'm coming back to you. And Massaquah catches the football in the crossing route, and then it, it's just his athleticism that gets him down inside the Kentucky 10. Nice little redemption play for Mohamed Massaquah. 77 yards on the pickup. Matthew Stafford, by the way, with a career high 365 yards through the air. Out of the eye, Chappas the fullback, the toss sweep to Marino. No Sean cuts it back at the five and run out of bounds at about the four yard line. This is the weak side G play, try to get Cordy Glenn out in front. Cordy does not get the block. Good job, Braxton Kelly scraping across from the linebacker spot to, to cut Marino off. Talk about an average per completion. Stafford 16 out of 26 for 3.65. Now, Brendan Sutherland's in the game. He's an ex excellent receiver in the flat. Chappis in motion. Play fake to Marino. Who was dropped back at the 10 yard line. They were trying to hit Sutherland, but he was covered like a blanket. Stafford had nowhere to go. You're exactly right, Dave. Braxton Kelly realizes, hey, Brendan Sutherland's in the game. He is a good receiver. Watch for 56 Kelly, the linebacker. He's going to slide out in the flat with Brendan Sutherland. Sutherland 36. Here comes Kelly 56. He takes him away. No place for Stafford to go with the football, and they get the sack. Nice defense by Kentucky. Georgia looking at a third down and goal from the 11 yard line. Stafford will call a timeout and the dogs will talk about it as the clock hits two minutes and five seconds. Georgia. Georgia. First time out this half. We'll be back in a It has been a shootout. Georgia and Kentucky, 38-35, just over two minutes to go. Georgia third and goal at the 11. No Sean Marino right here. Samuel in a tailback. Marino now in motion. Stafford, pressure comes, dodges, pump fakes. Rolling, throwing, touchdown, Georgia, A.J. Green. Matthew Stafford made it happen. Boy, he really did, Dave. He extends the play. You can't say enough about a quarterback that extends the play. And watch A.J. Green work the back line. He loses the little ground, gets in that back corner of the end zone, and 6'4 skies and makes the play. Looks a little bit like Montana to Dwight Clark right there. <laughs> and he made the catch in front of about three or four blue jerseys in the back corner of the end zone. Man, oh man, A.J. Green with an 11-yard touchdown reception. Stafford with his third touchdown of the day, 15th of the season, and he has 376 yards through the air. And this is a young man that threw three picks last week with no touchdowns, and he has answered the bell today. Well, it's been an unbelievable game. Well, I can't tell you how much that looks like a play that happened in Candlestick a long time ago. Four defenders around A.J. Green, but what A.J. Green does is he loses ground near the back corner of the end zone to get away from the defenders and then elevates and catches the football. I think Kentucky lost where A.J. Green was. They came up on Marino, who was at the goal line, and lost where A.J. Green was. A.J. stayed in that back corner, and credit Stafford for elevating it up for the 6'4 kid to go up and get it. Okay, now here comes the question, is that Kentucky has had some success moving the football, but only in small amounts. They've eaten up a lot of clock. This doesn't look like a quick strike offense. Where do you go now? Well, I think you stay, you keep doing the same things you're doing. You've got two timeouts, just under two minutes at 154 left. Cobb becomes a major problem for Georgia at this point when you spread it, his ability to run with the football. They got more than enough time to move it down. Of course, down four. The obvious here is Kentucky needs the touchdown. 
It's a pooch kick that will bounce at the 22. Taken by David Jones. Jones sneaks out. Needs a block. Jones stiff arms one Georgia tackler and gets it out close to the 40 yard line. So decent field position for the Wildcats. Well, that's an excellent effort from David Jones. First of all, he made the mistake of letting the ball hit the ground, and but got a nice hop, was able to scoop it up, break a tackle, and had he gotten a block from Winston Guy, he had a chance for more yardage there. C.J. Bird, excellent effort to come over and make the play. Well, you see Willie Williams walking off Andrew Williams, the senior backup safety, got his bell rung. And George is going to have to take a timeout, I believe, here. I don't think they were lined timeout. up or had the proper Georgia. personnel. The bench was Second time going crazy now. over there on the Georgia the sideline. Take a look at our Hampton Hotel's upcoming schedule and see where that young man will take his face paint as uh, they will take on Vanderbilt here next week and then they'll have a weekend off before finishing up the regular season against Tennessee and for the dogs of course next week Auburn potentially a game that could be an early kickoff at 1230 Eastern 1130 Central and then they'll round it out with the home game against Georgia Tech. Well, he's been as dynamic Randall Cobb has been as dynamic as we thought he would be running the football throwing it. He's done everything he could do to put Kentucky in position to win this game and they do have that opportunity now and it'll be on his right arm and both his legs if they do have a chance to win. But Georgia with one timeout left Kentucky with two timeouts. Cobb will throw it over the middle wide open is Grinter. Maurice Grinter down to the 34 yard line. Prince Miller brings him down. A gain of 29. Only eight receptions on the year for Grinter. He gets down through the middle. They completely lost him in coverage. Danell Ellerby, the guy trailing for the linebacker spot. First and 10, inside handoff goes to Tony Dixon. We'll get a couple. Clock goes to 127, and timeout taken by Kentucky. Second timeout this half. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, let's go check in with Dave Baker. Buzz. Yeah, Dave, not uh, you don't have the vision problems anymore as the sun has now gone in behind the clouds, but really, really cold. And these guys have been battling all day. I mean, what a great Southeastern Conference football game. And you hear that term, you know, Warriors and guys going at it. These are guys that are banged up, they're bruised, they're cut, and they're just going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now to finish this one out. This has been the story of big plays for Georgia and kind of a grind it out. Take advantage of what Georgia's given you for Kentucky. You look at the numbers and it's Georgia has 55 plays for 522 yards of offense. On the flip side, how about the number of plays Kentucky has run? 73 for 325. Kentucky's had the football for 10 more minutes than Georgia. And the dogs lead by four. Pressure comes over the middle. Pass is caught. Asher Allen with a big hit. Langster holds on to it. That'll be shy the first down by a couple of yards. Well, Georgia's countered with a 3-3-5 look. Three down linemen, three linebackers, five defensive backs. They've got more speed on the field to deal with Cobb running around with the ball. Lofts it up, looking for Grinner. Nearly picked off. Rashad Jones made a play on the football. It goes incomplete. Hey, that was a situation where Randall Cobb forgot what the situation was. He had an opportunity to take off with that ball and pick up the first down. Now fourth down for this football team. This could be your ball game right here with 59 seconds to play. Kentucky does have a timeout left, but won't matter if they don't pick up the first down. Now George is going to try to shadow Cobb because he... I would think there'd be some design with him trying to run the football to pick up this first down. Here's your ball game. Cobb throws it, lofts it up, and it is incomplete, but it doesn't matter in Georgia, although a flag comes in late. There may be a face mask against Georgia. Oh, my. 
goodness. And Kentucky still has hope. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense. This is a heck of an effort play by Georgia's defense. They grab the helmet. It looks like Jarius Wynn got his hands on the LC. He gets the mask. He's got his hands on the backside of the helmet. Never saw him get hold of the mask. He got up underneath the ear, ear hole area of the helmet. And 51 seconds left. First down and 10 for Kentucky. Georgia showing pressure. Trying to set up the screen. for the Georgia Bulldogs. He elevated and snagged the football out of the air, and that is your ball game. Davis, this is the situation where you got a young quarterback. The play is not there. Georgia's got it well defended. Throw the ball out of bounds, but he has not had enough reps at quarterback in the, in the SEC to realize let's just minimize this play. Great play by Dobbs to snip out the, the screen. It was not there at all. And Rich Brooks is going to call his young man, young quarterback over and tell him that we don't have a chance to win this football game unless you do what you've done today. Boy, Georgia came into Kentucky. They knew they were getting a fight today, and they went toe to toe for 59 and a half minutes. Mark Richt will be more than happy to get out of this stadium today. Boy, I would imagine he's the first one off the field. He's going to run to the locker room. I mean, what a tremendous effort by Kentucky. Georgia answered just about every one of Kentucky's salvos. They got back and were able to get the lead, but we can't say enough about both sides of the football playing as hard as they could play. A heartbreaking loss for Kentucky. You see Mark Rick and Rich Brooks just both kind of shake their heads. And Randall Cobb did a nice job today, but came up short in the end. Matthew Stafford throws for 376 yards, and the Dogs win it. Dave Baker caught up with Mark Rick. To fight your guts out in this one. Yeah, it was a gut check. It was an unbelievable ball game. Uh, both teams did an unbelievably great job. And I'm just thankful. You've been around some great players that have made some great throws, but that last one by Matthew, that's that's one.